Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will see uh, what is the detailing and how the detailing of a beam is done. And here I have drawn a simple beam and this black color is the beam and here this is the support. Uh, let me write. And these two are the supports. And we have two section, section AA, you can see it clearly, uh, section BB and section CC and here we have provided section details. And here the stirrups are provided at the support at a very less spacing. That is because when you apply the load, suppose if you are applying a UDL, there will be a reaction at A and reaction at B. This is the support B and this is the support A. At that time, you can see that this is the shear force diagram you will get. So shear force is maximum at the support. You can see always stirrups are provided in the beam so that it should resist the shear. So you can see at over here, the shear force is maximum at the, you can see here it is maximum and here it's maximum, which is at the end of the beam. That is why, Minimum spacing is provided at the support. You can see the distance is very less. Uh, here we have not drawn it uh, at a consistent uh, distance, but usually here it will be like uh, up to L by 3 distance. L by 3 is the distance. Uh, L is the total length of the beam from this center to this center. L by 3 is from this center to here. Uh, so, at till length of L by 3, stirrups are closely spaced. After that, it is the spacing is increased and again at the support, the spacing is decreased. That is because the shear force is maximum. And here we are going to see one more thing. You can see this color, green color. These are the longitudinal bars. This blue color and this green color are the longitudinal bars. And the top longitudinal bars are provided to for the compression and at the bottom it is provided for the tension. And here you can see the green color bar that is extra bar is provided at the ends. Here you can see in the suction, this is the suction A and suction C is at the end. So here you can see at the top the extra rebars are provided. That is because when you draw a bending movement diagram, here you can see you will get a negative bending movement. In order to resist the negative bending movement at the end of the beam, that is the, at the supports, extra rebars are provided. And here, actually here, one more rebar should be the, see, you can see at the section C, at the top, at the section AA, two extra rebars are provided, even at the section C. That is because to resist the bending movement, when you draw a bending movement diagram, you will see that the bending movement diagram is like this. The, and these are the two supports and here you will get the positive bending movement and here you will get the negative bending movement. In order to resist the negative bending movement, the extra rebars are provided at the supports. See, actually here you can see the longitudinal bars, these are of two of 16 mm dia here you can see this one and this one and at the bottom here you have provided two of 20 mm dia here and at the mid span you are providing the extra rebar two of 12, di 12 mm diameter here why we are providing because here also we are getting the large amount of bending moment here top at the top we don't need any extra rebar because we know that concrete is very good in taking the compression but very weak in tensi tensile that is why when the load is applied on the beam the top layer will undergo compressive and the bottom layer will undergo ten tensile that is why extra rebars are provided at the bottom and also to resist the bending movement as you can see over here you can see in the suction BB you can see that extra rebars are provided at the suction BB. Even at the suction C, it is at the support. So, extra rebars are provided at the top. 
you can see you can see you can have a look over here carefully here you can see uh, these are the end supports and here you can see the spacing between the stirrups are close uh, that is it is very less at the support and here when it comes to the mid span of the beam it is very far away and again when it is at the support it is very closer to each other and you can see uh, at the top at the support edge two extra rebars are provided that is because to resist the negative bending moment and at the bottom you can see extra two bars are provided other than this main bar that is to resist the negative bending that is to resist the positive bending moment as well as to resist the tension Let's see and and these other bars these two main bars go from one end to another and you are at the bottom you can see you can clearly understand from this picture and you can also verify that how you will get the shear force and the bending moment diagram in the beam you will get the same way because the end supports are fixed and usually bending moment will come like this and uh, but if the load is uniformly distributed that is UDL uniformly distributed load is applied and sometimes it varies depending upon the what type of load if you are giving an it in addition to point load here the shear force will vary again and here the bending moment will vary but typically you will get the negative bending moment at the support at the support and the positive bending moment at the bottom and also tension to resist the tension at the bottom since concrete is very weak in tension we are going to provide the extra rebars and at the supports stirrups are closely spaced because at the support shear force is very maximum that is why you can see at the mid span of the beam shear force is very less and if you take anything if you take any type of beam when it is loaded here in addition to UDL if you add the point load or if you add the trapezoidal load you will get almost a similar if shear force will be maximum at the supports and here you can see that the stirrups are made like this you can see you can see, you can have a look at it is made like this everywhere that and the angle should be 135 degree uh, these are called the hooks and uh, hooks and the stirrups should be provided with hooks because in order to resist the seismic loads uh, in a region where seismic loads are there uh, but still even if the seismic loads are the, not there we will provide we will go and provide the hooks or sometimes they will provide 90 degree hook that is like this it will be there just it, uh, come, it will come like this and go like this and this one sometimes but for the seismic loads when you apply the seismic loads or in the seismic region hook should be provided for 135 degree and it will resist the seismic loads and thank you for watching my video please do like and subscribe my channel for more videos like this and comment below for any suggestions thank you